Uh, we're going to continue to talk about India's health. We have to look at this pandemic and the issue of zoonotics or diseases that can jump from an animal to a human. It's become imperative that we adopt the concept of One Health, which is our tagline for this campaign. It's One Health, One Planet, One Future. This is because human health is very, very dependent on the health of the animals around us, the health of the environment around us, our food, our water, our air, everything that keeps us alive comes from the environment, the natural world and the animals around us. Uh, so when the whole system turns unhygienic or is damaged or sickens and disease in humans is sure to follow. So to discuss this, we have with us uh, Dr. Randeep Guleria, Director Ames, and uh, we have Atul Chaturvedi, Secretary of the Department of Animal Husbandry. Dr. Guleria, while we're grappling with this novel coronavirus and it's dominating all of our headlines right now, India is home to several zoonotics. From swine flu to the Japanese encephalitis to rabies, toxoplasmosis, others, and the Nipah now. I mean, these are all pretty serious, serious diseases. What's our status in terms of future pandemics and just, you know, how much monitoring is done of these various zoonotics that exist within the country? So I think this is very, very important for us to understand the concept of One Health. And I'm very happy that you brought it up because what we've been seeing over the last two, three decades is the fact that we're seeing a lot of infections jumping species and you talked about swine flu before that we had bird flu luckily that virus did not really have the ability to have sustained human to human spread and we did not have a pandemic because that virus has a case fatality of 60 percent similarly we've had other viruses MERS is another one Zika and you rightly said we have an outbreak of Nipah which has happened uh, uh, in the southern states therefore there is a need to have active surveillance but more importantly, look at the concept of One Health, animal health, plant health, the environment, and look at it in a holistic manner. And it's not only infections. One Health also encompasses a lot of other things. Another important issue that One Health really encompasses is antimicrobial resistance. There is also a lot of antibiotic resistance that we are seeing. Some people argue that we may really end up in coming into what is known as the pre-antibiotic era because of the resistance of antibiotics that we're seeing in our ICUs. And that's also because of a lot of antibiotic misuse in poultry, in agriculture, and therefore One Health has to be looked at in a really comprehensive manner. And surveillance is very, very important because when uh, viruses jump species, they also mutate and then develop the ability to spread rapidly in that species as has happened with COVID-19. It jumped species but then mutated and now has become a human virus. And now we see that there are cases where the virus has jumped from humans to other animals. We've had reports of uh, COVID-19 in, in uh, tigers, in, uh, in, in cats. And therefore, it's important to remember that viruses will keep jumping species. And we as uh, responsible citizens who have really taken over the planet, if I may put it that way, should also really respect nature and the planet and work towards building a better uh, future for our uh, uh, future generations. Dr. Guleria, this is Amitabh Bachchan. I want to know what is Nipah virus? Can you tell us a little more about it and, and the outbreaks and how concerned and worried should we be? Why is it so hard to find a kind of medication that would work effectively against zoonotics? So two parts. One is the Nipah virus. Nipah virus again is a viral infection which comes from bats and therefore occurs in a part of Keral which is in the forest area there. And because of the fact that it is transmitted in that manner, luckily it doesn't spread to other parts because it occurs because of close contact. The challenge of course is to find good antiviral drugs because these are viruses which continue to mutate and change. And therefore having effective drugs which are going to be useful is something which is a big challenge. Uh, the other issue, of course, is that these are viruses which keep emerging. We can't predict what the next uh, new virus is going to be. We had swine flu at that point in time. People were not saying the next pandemic is going to be of COVID-19. So when you start having new viruses, you have to start looking at new antiviral drugs. In the beginning, when we had COVID-19, we tried a lot of antiviral drugs, which were what we call repurposed drugs because they were used for other viral infections. So as we, form, as we make new vaccines, we will have to make new antiviral drugs as new viral infections emerges. The other important thing that I'd just like to stress is it's important for us to understand that this world has now become a global village. 
we can travel from one part of the world to the other in a matter of hours and we can carry that infection that may be present in us still in the incubation period from one area to the other. We never would see Ebola coming out of Africa because people would not be traveling so much. Now people would carry the infection and go to the US, they can come to India and the infection will happen like that way. SARS spread from Hong Kong to Canada because one person got the infection while he was crossing the corridor in a hotel and the other person was coughing and he caught an evening flight and went to Canada and he had an outbreak in Canada where people were not able to recognize that this is a novel virus which has come all the way from Hong Kong. So as the world gets smaller, we have to have surveillance not only in our own country but at a global level because viruses will travel and humans will carry them. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.